Ever since governments took over printing paper money, it's gotten exponentially more difficult to be a counterfeiter. But over the years, some truly great counterfeiters have emerged. Here's a rogues gallery of some of the best. Not only was Stephen Burroughs a great counterfeiter, he was also a great all-round flimflam man, and it turns out in the end, a pretty great human being. Back when Stephen Burroughs was a little kid in 18th century New England, he once stole a bunch of watermelons, hid them, and then went and joined the search party that was on the hunt for the thief. Later on, as he grew older, he once led a congregation as a preacher for several years, all the while passing counterfeit money of his own making. In the end, though, he became known for using the wealth he accumulated to do things like build libraries, which makes him a pretty awesome person. What do you get when you take the man who's credited with creating the knockoff perfume industry and pair him with a master counterfeiter? Well, you get Britain's Lavender Hill Mob, which, over the course of its lifetime, is credited with making an estimated 50 million pounds sterling worth of fake currency. Scotland Yard finally launched Operation Mermaid to break up the gang, which was so successful, the Bank of England had to change its 20 pound note to make it more secure. The Nazis? Yeah, it's true. Under Operation Bernhardt, the Nazis scoured their concentration camps to find prisoners who had experience as printers and, under threat of even worse internment, put them to work creating fake American and British currency. The whole plan was to release so much fake money on the British and American markets that it would set off massive inflation and set the war efforts back in both countries. Charles Ulrich was one of the most successful counterfeiters in 19th century America. He's credited with making an estimated $80,000 worth of fake money, worth about 1.4 million US dollars today. Ulrich also had a penchant for escaping jail. He once got away from hot pursuit by steering a small boat right along Niagara Falls. His women were his undoing though. His girlfriend, mistress, and wife all took issue with his idea of all of them living under one roof and turned him in. You've probably already heard of Frank Abagnale. They made a movie out of his book, Catch Me If You Can, starring Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. The cool thing is, it's almost all true. Not only was Abagnale a really great counterfeiter, he was also extremely daring. Once, when Abagnale was in a building that was surrounded by the FBI, he came out posing as a federal agent and instructed the real federal agents to go ahead on in that Abagnale had already fled the scene. If you want to know even more, check out How Stuff Works article, Five Successful Counterfeiters. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more cool videos. What do you get when you take the man who's credited with cre... What do you get when you take the man who's credited with cre... Sorry, this one's tough. And instructed the real federal agents to go ahead on inside that Abagnale had already fled... Shit.